is Rachel Page. I'm a staff scientist at the Smithsonian Tropical Research Institute in Panama. I study predator-prey interactions, and one of the, the cool things that I study, I look at this, this bat that feeds on frogs. It's known as the fringelet bat, or the frog-eating bat. It uses the advertisement calls that frogs make to attract their mates to find the frogs. So in order to, to get a mate, this frog has to produce a loud, conspicuous advertisement call. But by doing so, it's then putting itself vulnerable to predators like frog-eating bats. And this is, this is a neat situation because it's a conundrum that many animals face in nature. It's this tug between natural selection on the one hand and sexual selection on the other hand. What we do is go out into the rainforest at night, and we set up mist nets near streams and small ponds, and we net until we catch the species we're interested in, the frog-eating bat. Once we catch this bat, we bring it back to a large outdoor flight cage at the forest edge, and we run a whole bunch of behavioral tests. Most of them involve speakers. We broadcast frog calls from a speaker. We look at how the bat responds. We videotape responses with infrared video cameras. One of the most interesting things that we've discovered is that bats are actually very flexible and very quick learners. Just by listening to the frog mating call, they can tell if it's a palatable species of frog or a poisonous species of frog. And not only that, they can rapidly readjust these associations given new information. They also can learn very quickly from other bats. So just by social learning, they can quickly change the associations they have. So there's a number of, of reasons why this kind of work is important. Um, for one, it's just fascinating to know what the animals do in the natural world around us. But another is in terms of conservation, we can't preserve the natural history that surrounds us without knowing more about it. I was always interested in animals and in the natural world growing up. Um, I was one of those kids who had tons and tons of bizarre pets. I think the most exciting moment was actually the first time I saw these bats in the tropics and I was catching these frog-eating bats for the first time. I brought them into the flight cage, played them a frog call, and it was incredible to watch because you saw these amazing ear motions that tracked the frog call. And then you saw the bat fly right to the speaker and look for the frog that it assumed was inside the speaker. And it was just this amazing moment of thinking, wow, these are incredible animals and what questions can I ask?